Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to my living room. Again, no kitties down here. It is warmer upstairs than downstairs, so um, unless I've been sitting on the couch for a while, usually they go upstairs, so sorry. Maybe they'll come down um, before we're done, but uh, they're not here right now, so I've been told people want that update right at the beginning, um, so that way they know whether to tune in or leave, so I get it. That's our update for today. Okay, let's talk gorgeous ball work. So, we're going to use this today to practice or to talk a little bit about breathing and abdominal contraction. I know I put in the description, bracing, that idea of creating a solid core, which is kind of a, you know, I, I know I talked last week about like sort of nebulous, undefined words. Core is definitely one of those. I use it all the time. It's such a jargony word and I definitely use it. Um, but for today, I'm going to talk about abdominal engagement, meaning use your core. Uh, to create some protection along your torso, being anything from your shoulders to the bottom of your pelvis. And bracing is a word, again, kind of a, well, maybe a, a less jargony word, but bracing is the idea of that creating of abdominal pressure when you are doing like a max Really, any heavy lift, so any like Olympic lift, deadlift, back squat, um, absolutely anything overhead for sure. Um, and also, um, you know, kettlebell stuff. So bracing, we won't talk as much about breathing and bracing today, but that's uh, another subject we can get into. We're just going to get into more of like the basics of just what is bracing and what are some ways we can play with it or start to feel it a little bit. Now, we all know I love this ball, gorgeous ball. You can see it's got this nice, slightly deflated feeling going on. If you don't have one of these, um, you can grab a blanket and roll it up. You could also grab a pillow off of your couch or your bed and use that instead. So um, again, this is a tool, but there are ways we can make that tool out of other household objects. So uh, don't feel like, oh, I can't do this because I don't have that thing. Yeah, this is great and it's good for other stuff too, but I don't want anyone to feel like, well, I can't watch this or this is great, but like, what am I supposed to do? Use Use something else. Again, we want it to be forgiving pillow blanket, something along those lines, something, nothing hard. I know sometimes we put kettlebells in our hips. I'm actually not a super fan of that for other reasons, but this is something where you want a soft object. Okay, so the idea of working your abdominals. Like I said, we're gonna use this today to not only soften, but also to feel. I made this reference a number of times before, but I'm gonna make it some more. This idea that the balls are not just a I'm rolling out a sore spot because I did a lot of push-ups and I want my chest, you know, to feel better. Yeah, they work for that. Um, you know, they can help you get a little bit more stretch. Say your chest is really sore and you roll it out and you can sometimes get a little more stretch and feel a little bit better. But the idea of body mapping so that when we have this object that we stick in an area, it helps create a little more connection because we have um, a way to feel this muscle or body part with some feedback from an object rather than I'm just here and I'm like, can I feel what my pack feels like? I mean, maybe some people can, that requires a lot of work and focus 
and uh, and practice. And sometimes when we're learning some of that, it's really, really helpful to have this. It brings a little blood flow there as well, which can bring a little heat and again, help bring some awareness to that area. So in seeking this in the abdominals, it's not just a, I wanna soften the abdominals, but a, I wanna be aware of what is happening. This is an area of our body where, um, you know, sometimes there's some feelings around this area. And so there can be maybe some disconnect uh, because, well, a couple of things. Maybe you've just kind of shut off any awareness of that area. Oh, I don't, I don't like that area. You know, I've been told by the world around me that um, unless you have like a six pack, then you're not awesome. You're awesome. Everyone is awesome. Um, and that actually a six pack is nothing to do with whether or not you're strong or have awareness in your core. So um, for some reason, you know, it's become this aesthetic, aesthetic thing. Um, but that, you know, again, not saying like, if you're like, but I still want one, that's fine. I want one. I'm not, I'm not judging you for that. I'm just saying, um, you know, it's okay not to have one and to be like, Hey, I can do a thousand sit-ups, but I don't have a six pack. Yeah. Because well, there are other reasons, you know, the whole like abs are made in the kitchen. Absolutely. Having a six pack, well, A, you have to have a six little, um, you have to have the right fascia lines in your abdominal area, which not everybody does. Some people have like a four or an eight, uh, pack in there, or even like a three. Um, you know, I've seen dissection videos. Yes, I watch dissection videos because I'm a weirdo. That's why you <laughs> listen to me, right? Because I'm the one who's like, I'm going to go on YouTube and watch uh, Gail Headley videos because it, they're so curious. But yeah, people who have like a three pack because they have their fascia is different on the abdominals. So again, six pack for a people is also going to be like maybe what, uh, what you have anatomically. So, uh, it's not achievable for everyone and like, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're not awesome, not healthy. Uh, yeah, a lot of all those, all those good things. I know I could have come up with the third reason, but it's early. Okay. So me, again, creating some connection to this area. If you don't regularly, you can, I'm just kind of rubbing my abdomen right now. Yeah, if you don't connect to this area, but you're like, I would like to squat 400 pounds, well, then we need to have a chat about um, maybe, you know, making friends with whatever you got. And again, I think I talked about this last week in the meditation video, making friends with your body, with yourself, with you know, wherever you are right here doesn't mean like, oh, I'm just accepting and complacent. You can still love yourself and want to change. And in fact, wanting to change is a sign, a great sign of love because, um, you know, as I learn and tune into ways that I know that I work and things that I do, um, I understand like, oh, this is a way for me to work better and get more done or, you know, change this thing to, you know, be better out in the world. Uh, so it's not like saying, oh, this is just the way I am. Accept it. This is me saying, this is the way I am. These are ways I'm going to try and, you know, change that. Some of it's, you know, some of them like, oh, that seems okay. Some of them I'm like, no, I need to work on that. So again, it's become like a a therapy session kind of feels like uh, so connecting to that core bracing if you've ever used a weight belt this is kind of that same feeling um, you know we want to make sure that we're creating that we're able to create that feeling 
without a weight belt. That like that, a weight belt's great if you're maxing out, if you're going for like a super huge lift. But we wanna make sure that every time it's just this like heavy five on the board, you're not going and grabbing that weight belt. Um, because your squat's gonna get stronger than your abdominals, if that makes sense. And then there's, you know, in the middle of a workout, there's gonna be some, um, you know, discrepancy there. And that's, you know, another way people sometimes hurt themselves. Okay, what you're gonna do is lay on your back. I want you to bend your knees and put the bottoms of your feet on the floor. You're gonna put one hand on your chest and one hand on your abdomen and then let your elbows lay on the floor. You could close your eyes here. Don't fall asleep. I want you to take seven breaths. As you do this, notice your hands. Notice which hand raises first. Notice which hand rises more. If you try, are you able to keep one hand still and let the other one rise and fall? Try it with both. And then you're gonna grab your tool, using whatever you're using. I'm gonna go a little skin for the wind this morning, even though I got this big sweatshirt on. And I'm gonna stick it right in my abdomen, right up around belly button. Like I always say, you can use this thing wherever. You know, sometimes we go a little higher to roll out the diaphragm, but we're rolling out the abs today. I recommend starting up on your forearms here, if you're not used to this. Again, going back to that, you know, we're not trying to force anything. We want to be soft. If you are someone who maybe engages your abdominals, um, like you stand up and suck in your gut all the time, first of all, we're all working. No one's going out, so you can relax. But just like every other muscle in the body, we want to be able to contract and relax. So if you are someone who maybe you know that like you engage fat a lot, you know, again, it's, uh, you know, there's, we're dealing with um, some physiological and then some psychological stuff. So um, don't be surprised if there are some big feelings that are attached to some of this particular work. If you need to back off and come back at it in a much slower way. Of course. I mean, again, reach out. I'm not I'm not a psychotherapist at, at all. I don't think anyone thinks that I am. But, you know, if you just are like, I need somebody to, like, just listen to me. Yeah, email, you know. Um, or, you know, if you're comfortable sharing, you can put this down in the comments. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. I don't like to assume things about people. But I'm guessing that... You know, there are some strong feelings that are wrapped up for a lot of people with, with this kind of work. So, share, don't share, um, don't keep it bottled up, um, journal, you know, if you don't want to make it public, that's fine too. We're going to do a little rolling set to side. So, I'm going to turn this down here so you can see. So, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go all the way across the front 
uh, all the way out to the waistline. This is probably even a little fast. And one thing I didn't mention, those of you who are following along, empty stomach. So like hour, hour and a half after eating, maybe a little bit longer. Especially if like you ate something really heavy and you're really full. I mean you'll you you'll I think discover like why that's not awesome. It doesn't feel great. I have tried I've been like yeah, you know, it's fine, and then been like, Ooh. but you can also give yourself acid reflux, so, and, you know, if your stomach then is sort of bracing against throwing up or creating, you know, it can be just not bad, but, you know, you can get less results. Okay. We're gonna pause back in the middle. You might even close your eyes here. But now you might be able to feel that heartbeat, a little bit of blood flow. And I want you to notice the abdomen moving now into the ball, like it did into your hand as you, as you were breathing, noticing. And at the end of your next inhale, you're gonna pause, you're gonna hold your breath, and you're gonna brace, you're gonna press the abdominal wall against the ball. I'll move the camera a little bit so you can see. So I'm breathing in. Then a few cycles of native breath in between that natural breath. This is a contract, relax exercise. I know we've done some of this in creating some more softness and it actually can help create that if you find that you have trouble relaxing. But it's also teaching me that feeling of filling up with air, engaging the abdominals creating a sense of tension, honestly, not just in the front, but I'm working and creating that all the way, like three dimensionally, all the way around my spine. So almost I breathe in and then I tighten all of that up in there. And you wanna do that again, two, three minutes. Practicing that Bracing, it's the same feeling. Then you're gonna come back onto your back where we started. And I want you to do what we started with. Can you notice any shifts with your breath? Allow yourself to be really curious and observant. So one of the reasons that I do like this ball is because of something like this, where we can use this rolling exercise 
to, you know, release again, the abdominals need release just like every other muscle. And so we can create a little bit of massage there. It can help, you know, relax in that um, abdominal area, which helps with breathing. So hopefully you notice some shifts in your breath, um, whatever that means. Shift is an open-ended word um, on purpose, but it also then starts to teach us some, um, some ways to work so that we're not just relaxed all the time, but we're also not just working all the time because we all know that like neither one of those is sustainable. Like you need the up, you need the down. So, um, yes, I talk a lot about down regulating because I find that most people that I meet need a lot of down regulation because they're here all the time. But I do know some people who are, you know, a little too here, um, you know, especially, um, in these times, uh, you know, as you're hanging on a home, it's, it is really easy to get kind of actually here. A lot of times we're, we feel like we're down regulated, but we're not quite, um, you know, laying on your couch agitatedly watching Netflix is not the same as down regulation. So, um, be careful about that. Um, that, you know, those are, those are sort of not the same thing. So down regulation is not necessarily being, you know, um, you know, we talk about sleep, but if your sleep isn't restful, it's not down regulating. So sleeping 18 hours a day might not be <laughs> the most down regulating thing, especially if like it's not restful sleep. But um, yeah, taking some moments to do this again, teaches you then to use that core so then you can like do a weight that weighted run farmer's carry you know heavy back squat when we get back to the gym but stuff that you're still doing now you know kettlebell swings even running you know you need to be able to hold yourself upright those of you working on lunges this kind of work is really great for learning how to stay upright when you are lunging um, but then it also gives us this opportunity to explore the breath a little bit so we get both in one. All right, enough of my lecture today. Remember, questions, comments, leave them down below. And happy Wednesday, y'all.